So, the camera is running again, and I just prepared, well, whatever I will need to do this next step. So, just a normal kitchen towel roll or uh, kitchen paper. So, and this is a polymer polishing stuff that you can buy in whatever shop. I did put it in another bottle because the other bottle was damaged. So, someone told me that. I did decant that into another bottle, but you know, she is still still <laughs> listening, I guess, and laughing Sorry. and laughing in the background. So, um, yeah, I did trash the other bottle by accident, and you know, then you need you are in the sudden need of another bottle. So the only thing I do is fold this one up so you have enough thickness or softness also. And then put that one away. Whenever you are going to use a polymer polishing product, you have to really mix it again because the different products in there will get separated. So shake it up really good before you are going to do anything with it. Uh, I hope that the running late won't use uh, won't produce too much sound anyway. And I don't know, we will get enough sounds coming from other places anyway. Why? Because we have a very fine weather going on here, as in storm to up to 60, 60, 70 miles per hour in a moment. And now and then we're getting a rain shower, so, and in this workshop I hear a little bit of everything. So I guess I better put my bottle here, so it won't be in the way of the camera and I'm going to zoom a little bit in on the object so that you can see more. Uh, maybe shut down this light, let the camera be on it. Uh, I will use both I guess so this is just my way of lighting the, the, the thing, the object that I'm working on. I'm always working on underneath polar light so this is a very extreme industrial white light that lets me see everything. Of course, this isn't what you will see whenever the end product is underneath sunlight. Anyway, here we go. I hope that the camera is able to see the difference. Because I can. I can. have to be very careful in what you use because you know the bottle's a bit in the way to see yeah well from your from your side it is you are on, on another camera than that I'm using to record this Can you even see it on the webcam that this is getting shinier and ultra shiny, it's lovely. <coughs> well this is I why Yeah, that, that that is why I am still uh, I am recording this session. Why? Because people are always asking questions as in how do you get a high shine? And a high shine is well High shine is nice to get on some objects, I like high shines, but the problem is getting a high shine will most of the time be translated in a high cost of products and everybody hates 
a high cost of products. So that's why I'm using totally different products than you are used to. Or that people are used to. And they are a lot cheaper and the funny bit is they even work better than the than the highly or the high cost products. So you get what you want, you get a high shine. And you don't lose a lot of money in the process. Oh yeah. Now we are getting there. Oh, this is really getting nice and beautiful, even on the inside. This is normally the, what they would do with, or what they wanted to recreate or create with whatever they call a buffing process. This is also buffing. <coughs> but buffing for a lot cheaper than you normally would do. I hope that the camera is catching it as I see it. But at the moment... Over here it is. Yeah, at the moment I can see my hand and my kitchen paper and whatever. When I'm looking at it, I see it as an, an, a mirror image. So. This is really getting a high shine on it. Now, again, and even this one is cheap, of course. Does that soak into the wood? No, it can't really soak into the wood. Why? Because it has been totally sealed. So not one pore of the wood is still open. It has two layers of a hardener on it. So sanding sealer with hardener and it has what four or five layers of clear coat on it. So nothing gets soaked in. You can compare this one with your car that is out there in the rain. So, so is this hardening it? No, this is not hardening it, this is just polishing whatever you put on there as a hardener. So, clear coat is a hardener, yeah? Yeah. So, but you can't really clear coat wood without without shutting, uh, without closing every pore that you have in there. Right. So, therefore, you use the wood hardener and then clear coat it, clear coat it, clear coat it, sand it down again, sand it down again, clear coat it again. You know, do the different steps until you are pleased with whatever you see. And then the last bit is this, shining it up. And yeah, this is really working fine. The other thing that I really like to do whenever I'm doing stuff like this and uh, now it's standing still and I guess you can really see how shiny it is now it is the good time to put the other light back on so this is my yellow source light that let me compare what it will look as said as in how it would look underneath normal sunlight which is a yellow source of light Mm. This is still, of course, the bit that I am not pleased about because this is the punky bit which has still some vulcanization. <coughs> and now, of course, the little bits that are in there are being filled up with uh, the polymer rests. Uh, 
this is easy to get rid of afterwards. Why? Because uh, whatever you do, you can wash it or whatever, so it, it will be resistant to water or, or anything. So this one can be washed out. Uh, is that thin safe? Uh, it is a clear coat, so whatever clear coat that you are going to use that is hardening up will be food safe in the end. So, right. And now I'm just applying some <coughs> water again to see if I can can rid can get rid of those polymer spots. They are already getting better though. So okay. And now I can use whatever cloth on it as I want to clean it. I will not disturb or scratch the, uh, the surface again because you know when you have a spot on your car you can also go there with the cotton, uh, cotton cloth and, and go <laughs> clean it without leaving any scratches. So Say again? That dried very quickly, the polymer. Polymer is something that is, yeah, let's say it has water in it, and then the rest is somewhere, a couple of products in it uh, that will fill up pores, and also it has a very light uh, grain in it that will also act as sanding paper. Uh, that is what a polymer based polishing product is. So, all right. Yeah, so every time you polish something, just remind the fact that you're taking away a little bit of your coat. It is only a micron or whatever, or less than a micron, but that is. Mm, you can't shine up. Is it a bit like tea cutting? Uh, if I would know what that word, uh, is. Uh, well, in England, we buy tea cut and you polish a car with that, it takes a very fine surface off the paint. Uh, yeah, because uh, the grinded tea leaves will also have what they have two purposes. There is, whenever you are going to make tea, you will see two things going on. Uh, one, you get tea, but then, of course, every plant has some form of, let's say, grease in it as a fat. And when you are making tea, you can see the little bit of fat that you have coming to the surface, you know? Yeah. Coffee does the same thing. You can, you can also use coffee grou uh, grouse to grind something up. As long as you have a grain in something, you can use it to polish something. The finer the grain, the, the, the better it will polish. So, polymer is, yeah, uh, uh, an industrial made product <coughs> or the, the grinding stuff that's in it. The polymer itself is more like a filler to get those little pores filled up. And then again, the only thing that you do is even the surface out with, with the grinding, uh, the, uh, the grain that is in there. So, same thing going on with products of nature, then you would do it with an industrial project, doesn't really matter. I am doing stuff that is totally not necessary anymore, I guess. It's brought the wood to life. Uh, well, this is of course a way of polishing something that will not add to the color of your wood or whatever, so it keeps everything as it is. Now yeah, I'm it shows the grain nice. Yeah, I'm zooming in with my camera if I'm getting this one, but no. I'm going to zoom out of it again. Anyway, this is what it looks now. So, it looks so lovely. I'm going to kill the upper light and only switch to yellow light. And this will be better for the camera to see how it is really looking. Uh, very white in here, very reflective. So my camera has a problem with that one. But over here it's darker. And then you can see it really shine off. Going to switch on my other light again. 
my working light. Oh, okay. Yeah, your camera on the computer will need a little bit more adjusting than the one on top of my workbench. <laughs> so <coughs> now I need something to whatever I hear in my cupboards. I need something white. People like to see white on a board. I'm not going to present this too well. I'm just going to spread it open. I guess everybody can see something white at the moment. And yeah. well, you can, but the camera is in a wrong angle to see this anyway. Uh, We'll do it in another way, but uh, oh, this is really ah oh, okay. Found the right distance for the other camera, so now you can see in this camera how it sees from. And look, I'm going to reflect some light on the punky bit. See, I didn't lose this one, so I could have been using, let's say, two or three layers more and then this one would be gone too but this was a test so probably a trashing a trash piece anyway and this is what you can see on the inside so it is shiny as in shiny yeah it is I'm going to move the angle of the camera a little bit so you can see where the object is and <coughs> I have something else on top that I can also use this one to turn around and then turn around this one again. So yeah, I guess I am zoomed in to it. <coughs> uh, now my camera is, is giving me a hard time because it seems to flip over the image. Uh, I need to switch some stuff off. But In a little while, just flick it so I can see it on my camera. Yeah, I will whenever I'm going to stop this one I'm coming over to the webcam with the object so you can also see it because you are at the largest distance uh, distance uh, yeah this will work so even the backside you know I did this one too um, so nice and shiny everywhere so just this bit is giving me a hard time in my head but you know when you are working with punky wood you can expect some bits that are not that good but anyway I was going to trash this anyway as I said so uh, I will uh, uh, this was just a test and uh, uh, to prove something about finishing to someone so I guess it served a purpose as in explanatory stuff hmm I really like shiny things anyway going to shut down this camera uh, see you guys later <coughs>